Hello. <laughs> um, I'm Tracy Irway, and uh, I do work at Intel, and I'm also a member of the Minnow Board team, which is uh, a lot of folks at Intel and a few other places as well. I have some questions. Who here works at Intel? Could you raise your hand? So I know how to do damage control later. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> they're all spread out. They aren't sitting together. It's amazing. Um, I have a bunch of questions to ask because I've never been here before. I thought I'd be in a little room off on the side with 20 people. There's a lot of you out there. And I don't know anything about you. So um, who here is a hardware developer? Ooh, awesome. Who here is, would say they are a software developer? Oh my. And, and did, okay, did anyone play both sides and try to confuse me? Thanks a lot. <laughs> All right, yeah. Um, now I want to ask a couple more questions, because I'm here uh, from Intel, which is a big, massive, huge company, and so we have some issues, which is what I'm here to talk about. Um, I want to know about you guys. So who works for a company with 10 people or less? Sizable. How about 100 people or less? Same amount. 1,000 people or less? And how about the big, huge companies? Who's there? Just, mm, there's a few people. OK. All right. Um, here we go. I know you all think I was here to talk about how we were going to open source our chips from now until forever. <laughs> Um, I'm really not, and I think I'd uh, definitely be fired if I said that, that we were. But, so that's not what this talk is about at all. Um, I do want to show some of the boards that we have that are open source hardware to a certain extent. They're either, as I say, somewhat open. They're open in a way that the ecosystem can do open source things with them. Uh, and some of them are primarily open source. So I'm talking about Galileo, Edison, Joule, and uh, minnow board. So who here has ever heard of the minnow board? Seriously. Is that just because you read the fanatic part on the... Um, yeah, because minnow board people are definitely fanatics. But uh, so at the end of this, if I ask that same question, if I don't see every hand go up, then you're all fired. I'm just going to let you know. Um, What's interesting about these boards from Intel is they all have some degree of open source hardware-ish associated with them. Um, and really what drove the decisions as to what they were going to release in an open source hardware manner was really the strategy behind the program. So uh, there's a very big difference between a program that develops a board that needs to sell a lot of volume to make them worthwhile and versus, say, a program that really wants to sell the design in a way that um, other people can create the high volume. And so I would differentiate, be, differentiate between the Intel branded products and Minnow Board. And Minnow Board, um, Jason, wherever you are, thank you. I'm going to, uh, I just would like to thank Beagle Board because we actually, um, we took the Minnow Board program and we designed it the way BeagleBoard was designed, because he had so many great ideas, we just stole them. We just stole them. And uh, yeah, and they, and they work great. I mean, we do our own thing too, but, but the whole premise with a nonprofit. And, um, and I'll explain a little bit later on why we did it that way, in fact. So there's a big difference between Intel branded boards and how open they're going to be versus the Minnow Board, for instance. For us on the Minnow Board program, and there are a few <clears throat> excuse me, a few minnow, minnow boarders out there, um, it boiled down to two things, you know, the easy stuff and the really hard stuff. So um, this is what was easy. Absolutely nothing in the program <laughs> was easy. Uh, it started, the, this, the minnow board program started off with a bunch of software people who needed a little board. And so we thought, OK, we'll just make a little board. No one had made a little board that had an Intel processor on it that was low cost and easily accessible. And we thought, it, it can't be that hard. Certainly, someone can design an Intel board that is smaller than a power supply and actually use it for you know, software development. And so we started to figure out the hard stuff. And this is really my last foil, because all this stuff is hard every single piece of it. And it's hard primarily, I think, because of Intel's size and Intel's visibility 
and Intel's stature in the market, and certainly who's looking at us in terms of what we're doing and how responsible we are, what our quality is, what our um, support model is like. All those different things are important to the industry when they look at Intel. So the first three, the value proposition, education, and changing a culture. If you think about Intel, uh, anyone who's done any kind of reading or listening about Intel, we have been primarily a, a, a paranoid, I would say the two Ps, paranoia, uh, we're very paranoid from Andy Grove days, and also we're very proprietary. I mean, we have built a business on our IP, and our IP has been uh, hugely important to our success and hugely important to who we are. And so there's, there is, uh, the, our internal culture is still very much focused that way. If you look at an open source hardware program, it really says, here, take what I have, use it in a way that you want to use it, um, and use it over and over again. We don't care what you do with it, take it, do whatever. Um, try not to complain too much when things are wrong. <laughs> um, I, I shouldn't say that. But, but that's a very hard thing to get across internally at Intel, and probably a very hard thing to get across at any big company that has uh, really grown their value based on their own personal products. And it's a scary thing to say, here, take what we have and do what you want to it. Um, so changing the culture internally is, is very important at least on a per project basis, or at least on the people who you have to deal with who are involved in the project, because there is no project at Intel, even though we're huge and we have individual projects all around the company, you invariably need to work with other divisions and other groups and other capabilities across the company to make yourself and your project successful. So changing that culture across the company is, is very difficult. Uh, I would say we, we probably started working on Minnow Board in about, where's Scott Garman, 2013 maybe, maybe a little bit sooner than that. And, uh, and, and it was much more difficult at that point than it is now in 2016 going into 2017. We have a huge amount of support internally. And, uh, and that wasn't there yet because people didn't understand why we would be doing open source hardware. And, What's crucial about changing the internal culture is that you need to change that culture so that you make the right decisions. And the right decisions really between the value proposition and educating and, and the culture are based on what's right for the community. Because without the community, an open source hardware project is going nowhere, nowhere fast. So nowhere do you see community on this foil, and it really should be. Um, uh, but the first three things on this list really do point to community. So for Intel, branding, you know, uh, I think Forbes says we're in the top 20 brands in the world, Intel. And we really are. And so branding for a company of our size is so precious that um, I skipped over the first slide really quickly because I was, you know, did I get that circle R on there? Did I, did I get all the, the right things with Intel's name? Intel's brand is very important. And so immediately when we wanted to do an open source hardware project, um, it was a little bit dicey to get it through all the branding processes. So we chose not to. We followed, we followed the Beagle Board program and we created a nonprofit and a foundation so that we could create our own brand and, and play with the program a little bit and see how successful we could make it, how useful we could make it, and how much value we could actually give back to Intel, to the community, to the um, participants in the overall program. So branding is an issue for a really large company and how you deal with it and how you move forward. But the other boards that Intel puts out, Edison, Galileo, Juul, all those, um, you know, they have the Intel brand and they have, and, and they are less open if you compare the two. So it's hard for a company that has that much stature in the, in the industry. Um, licensing, licensing, we were so very lucky to be part of the Open Source Technology Center at Intel because we know so much about open source software. 
and we had internal processes that would pull in licensing and uh, legal matters and review things. So we actually have to review everything and have it approved by our body of experts before we can release anything externally. And even though the Minnow Board doesn't have to necessarily go through that process, we take it through the process anyway because Intel is associated with Minnow Board as well. No, I need more than five minutes. That's ridiculous. <laughs> so um, I want to talk about firmware because, thank you very much. <laughs> I want to talk about firmware because this was a huge issue for us and a huge success. Um, when we started the program, our firmware was totally closed. It was like one blob, never going to get into that firmware. And we worked with our firmware teams and uh, Tiana Core and, uh, and now uh, a majority of the firmware that is associated with the Minnow board is uh, accessible to someone who's doing development, who needs to bring up a new derivative board, who needs to do whatever. Uh, never would have happened before this program. So this was a huge win internally. Very excited to see our firmware teams out at open source conferences now, like ELC. Um, regulatory, I really only do have like three minutes, so I'm gonna, this is the biggest one on this list for anyone who's in a big company. So most of you may or may not be aware that uh, to actually release boards, they have to, to consumers, they have to pass a certain status with the FCC, at least in the United States. And there's a lot more to regulatory than FCC um, worldwide. But uh, what really brought us to a halt with the Minnow Board program was this issue, and primarily because Intel is huge and very visible to the FCC. So you will never see a board release from now on through the Minnow Board program unless it's a Class B board, meaning uh, you can take it home, you can use it with all your other consumer devices, it's not going to interfere, you can take it and put it right in your product the way it is, you can take the design, it's going to have a really great chance of passing FCC for your own product if you change it and want to recreate it. So uh, I, I, you know, I can't speak for anybody else, but I can tell you there are a lot of products out there that do not have this capability and do not have this requirement and, uh, and, have, and, and it adds a huge expense and a huge amount of time. So uh, regulatory is brutal for a big company like Intel. But we're absolutely determined to fulfill what we have to in that regard. So, um, and luckily it'll pass on in our open source hardware program as well because our designs will be that solid that you should be able to pretty closely recreate. Darn it down to a minute, I'm sure I am. Uh, roadmap. An open source hardware program, we didn't design our roadmap, and you know our roadmap is set for a long period of time. Um, we didn't necessarily design it for people to be able to easily manufacture. So a roadmap is now a, a, a questionable. And the last thing I want to tell you before I go is what we did differently with manufacturing requirements. At Intel, you can imagine we build a lot of boards, a lot of things. And so if you have a resistor that goes into a thousand boards, you can buy those resistors at a very low cost. But if you want someone to recreate your board through open source hardware, you don't want them to pay 20 times what you paid. So for the Minnow Board program in particular, and the reason why uh, we really paid attention to this was so that people could manufacture these boards easily, even if they didn't get high volume discounts as Intel would, even if they, um, and, and, and we're able to actually manufacture, solder, and build the boards without having some incredible fab that Intel may have the ability to access through our size and volume. So the manufacturing piece is huge, regulatory is huge, the culture is huge. Um, we really hope that with Minnow Board that we're gonna um, be able to hit all of these things effectively so that anyone here can take our designs and do derivative boards and be very, very successful with them. And that's it. So there you go.